Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the montage, and without further ado, let's get into the build itself. So all talents for this build to function are extremely important, but there's some talents that obviously exceed above the others. First of all, you definitely want to get all these alchemy talents. They're extremely, extremely, extremely important to your potions and their effectiveness. Then what you also want to make sure you have is all the bomb talents because they make your bombs so much more lethal and you can do so much more combos when you have all these bomb talents. Then another thing you want to really make sure you have if you guys didn't already know, Overflowing Dam is basically free for Silent Heart since we don't use Ether besides our Ardor Scream. And then last but not least, what you really want to make sure you have is ATDG, especially because I'm using Pozu's Ring. It can essentially have a six 16 second ATDG because it applies ATDG before posers and it applies it after I sheath so I can get a 16 second ATDG. So without further ado, I'll go over all the talents right now. Now those of you may be wondering why do I have all the anti-knock talents and why do I have Robber Baron? Now the answer to that is I'm not perfect obviously. Sometimes I get overwhelmed, sometimes it's like six people, sometimes it's even two people and they cycle and it's super super annoying. But sometimes I die, right? So why I have this, right? Like normally it wouldn't matter, right? Like you die, you die, it's whatever. But because I have to get iron and coal and all these these talents, these recipes, I got to get all these things for these potions and these bombs, I really like to hold on to them. So I really, really try not to die. If I die, right? Because it happens, I'll still keep most of my stuff. Now, in terms of equipment for my weapon, I have a Shattered Katana 3-star pen with Poser's Ring and Eden Kite. Now, the reason I have Eden Kite, you'll see it later, you'll see it in the combos, it's all gonna make sense. But the thing about it, right, why I chose it mainly, the first starting out reason, was because after flourishes, I thought if I sheathed, then people couldn't run from the eating kite. Because you know how people are normally skedaddling around your eating kite and they just blow up in a random place. I have a Cure's Ring for extra damage, Kongo's Clutch because I slide around a lot trying to catch a lot of runners, and Rosen's Ring for extra damage and it got pretty good health on it. And for my armor enchants, I have Drowned for the extra health. I have Displacement because, you know, <laughs> the last thing somebody needs is more mix-ups from a Silent Heart that already has a hot bar full of mix-ups. And Stench because it's just an extremely good enchant. Most people don't parry it for whatever reason. And it's free damage, so yeah. Before we begin, I just want to say sorry if the server is laggy. I believe no server is safe in terms of ping when you go to the Beloved Sophia for whatever reason. So what I wanted to showcase, right, is actually rim bouncing, right? So if somebody tries to escape your gravity field, right, for any reason, or they touch the rim of your gravity field, right, and they go like, Whoosh! Like that? Free Monikati right there. Absolutely free at the beginning. If, like, as soon as they bounce, just Monikati. If somebody tries to ascension out of your gravity field, you can catch them in Monikati there too. In fact, I prefer if your enemies are Star Kindred, make sure you have your Monikati and do not use it, like, at the first few seconds because they'll tend to want to escape via ascension. And you can literally just catch them in that with Monikati for free damage. And it keeps them in the gravity field. So it's actually really, really overpowered. Another thing is, so just for any reason, right? If they're at the gravity field, if they're trying to get out, you can Monikati and it's just free damage, right? But another thing is, uh, when you're flourishing with your Eden Kite and such, there's really good potential right there to do a uh, Monikati. If you posture break somebody, it's actually free Monikati. So let me just posture break my man over here real quick. Oh, brain sucker. Brain sucker got the best of me. 
three first three ticks and it's really good now another thing i like to do is when my pocket bombs activate which if you don't know what that talent is it's when i get hit i have a random chance to drop two bombs if my enemy is in a gravity field, which they usually are when that activates, if not, this still works. And they're near the bombs, or very close to the bombs. I like to sheath right before they explode, and it makes it very, very hard, if not unreactable, to react to. Now, another thing I like to do is deploy gravity field, jump out of it, and that means my enemies are able to get out of it, so why would I do that? I wait until they're right at the ring then you sheath as soon as they they're about to get over the ring and then they hit the ring they bounce back in and that's your chance to drink a potion throw a potion do whatever you want to do now for my potions i have the easiest potions to get probably these are urchins these are goblettos urchins is insanity these are goblettos for healing and then these are sanity regeneration blue caps now you know the meatballs in the ancient Rotlands? They instantly pop your head when you're at tier 3 insanity. So I like to throw these a lot, and since I have 65 willpower, it doesn't matter, you know. I can just throw these however much I want, and then I can drink Hearthening Remedies if I want. But my enemy, on the other hand, is gonna get popped really fast. That is essentially all the combos. There's definitely a lot of other small combos, but you, you'll be able to figure them out if you truly are able to copy this build fully. What I want to go over next is my sets. I got no Shrine of Order, because it doesn't need Shrine of Order, quite frankly. I got every talent I could wish for with my uh, current talents. So I got 40 Strength, 40 Fortitude, 40 Agility, 42 Intelligence. That too is for my race, but I decided to put the extra two in there too, just for that one plus potency. 65 Willpower and 100 Medium Weapon. And I actually took one out of Vitality, for my erudition instead of proficiency which is a bit weird but i think it's worth it for that extra m1 damage since it's technically not a damage multiplier and it's a base damage thing so you it just increases your multipliers overall if that makes sense and then one more thing before we end is i have ignition deep delver which means i can parry normally what are unparryable mantras which is really good for silent hair for getting more dread for disabling your enemy not only that but it has 35 elemental armor on top of the silent heart 10 percent resistance and return to the dark ages 25. like if i go against a hero blade they're dead like all the time i've never lost to a hero blade alone so yeah this is uh epic mantra slayer 3000 or as I like to call, Heartless Deep Woken Build. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you do, please do consider subscribing. The Brain Sucker wants you to subscribe. I want you to subscribe, so subscribe. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.